became a cellist for a few reasons. Probably the main reason was it was something I was good at and a lot of people seemed to be affected by my playing and something I was talented at and it was in my family, um, come from a musical family. Well after doing my um, tertiary studies I started up a business called Accent Strings with two other violinist friends and it just all went from there really. I started up my own teaching studio and just tried to get as much work as possible. I think over the years I've um, learnt how to manage my time very well and I think I prefer being my own boss. I'm more of a leader rather than a follower so it works well for me. And it's very flexible the hours so I um, can just drop everything and go on holidays, holidays if I want. Or it's, um, very flexible. So I've done um, session work um, for various CD recordings. Or you see I played a lot of weddings with my group accent strings and corporate functions and um, lots of teaching with private students and also a bit of classroom music teaching. Um, it's a whole variety of things. I could be playing in a church service one day and the next day I'm performing in a video clip from a pop band, so it's very diverse. I've played with a variety of artists, um, gosh, uh, the Veronicas, I did a film clip with them which was fun, <laughs> um, David Hobson, Tina Arena, Leona Lewis, that was fun, uh, what else? Iota, Faker, lots of different more indie rock bands. The best advice I could give to anyone um, wishing to become a freelance cellist would be just to say yes to everything and to get really involved in um, everything that's available and just be there and ready on and on time and um, just build up a really good reputation in the musical scene and um, it's really important to keep your contacts up and so um, mainly just to say yes to everything even if the gig isn't paid because eventually you'll get paid gigs out of it. The music industry is quite competitive. Um, as a cellist, there are, I guess, there's not that many jobs available, say, in the Sydney Symphony Orchestra. So um, you basically have to wait till someone dies or has a baby if you want to get a position in the Sydney Symphony Orchestra. So you have to find other means of um, making a career out of it. But um, certainly, it can be quite lucrative. I guess it's hard to, you know, put a number on how many hours I've I've dedicated to pursuing my dream. Um, but I guess it's just always been part of my lifestyle and growing up in a musical family and I mean obviously you do the hard yards, do many hours of practice as a child and then through university and, um, and then it's just sort of part of my lifestyle, attending concerts and rehearsals and performances so that it all that ties in together. I don't often feel like giving up because I really enjoy my work. Uh, I guess in the past there have been times which have been harder than others so I guess my family have always been there to support me and uh, encourage me to keep going, pursuing my dream. My life motto would be uh, use it or lose it. I think um, you really need to keep, keep your practice up and um, not even just with playing the music but um, with your health as well.